And hello again. Welcome to the fourth and final in this series of national dialogues that are all part of the preparations for that United, United Nations Food System Summit this autumn. We've covered a lot of ground so far. Ireland's 2030 agri-food strategy, the health and well-being of food systems for consumers and producers and communities, the change being driven by young people and by groundbreaking research, and all in the context of meeting the challenge of the climate crisis. Well, today we're looking at what all of this means for Ireland's foreign policy in trade and development, and in particular, our relationship with African countries. Once again, we have two great panels. I'll tell you more about them in a bit. And today, not just one, but two fantastic keynote speakers. Dr. Susanna Moorhead from the OECD and Dr. Jamie Morrison from the Food and Agriculture Organization. And we look forward to hearing from them shortly. And our chairperson for this afternoon's dialogue is Rory de Borca, the Director General of Irish Aid at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Throughout these dialogues, we've had great participation from you, our online audience, through Slido polls and the questions and comments you have sent us in all the panel discussions. And as Tom Arnold, who's with us again today, said in the very first dialogue, the aim of these discussions is not pushing consensus on people, but in fact, the very diversity of viewpoints that you have shared with us so far. And we hope to hear all that diversity again today. We're using Slido again, so please join our conversation online. Simply take out your smartphone and open your browser. Go to slido.com and enter our event code, hashtag food systems. And you can now ask questions and vote for the ones you like. We're starting with a quick poll. What sector are you joining us from today? Are you from the international development sector, the farming area, agri-food industry, university, research, or are you involved in civil society or an independent? Please let us know. And for more information on Ireland's food system and the UN Food System Summit this year, visit gov.ie forward slash food systems, where you can also register for uh, the upcoming dialogue. Now, the public consultation on the environmental assessment of the draft Agri-Food Strategy 2030, that remains open until the 15th of June, and they want to hear from you. Go to gov.ie forward slash consultations to have your say. And we look forward to hearing from you this afternoon. To get our session underway, here's your chairperson, the Director General of Development, Cooperation and Africa Division at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Rory de Borca. Thanks, Sonia. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. This is the fourth and last Irish National Dialogue and we'll focus on aligning domestic and foreign policy towards sustainable food systems. As Anya said, I'm Rory de Burke, the Director General of the Department of Foreign Affairs, Development Cooperation and Africa Division. I manage the Irish Aid Development Cooperation Programme. I'd like to thank Sinead McPhillips, convener of these dialogues, for asking me to be your chair today. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and insights on how Ireland can promote sustainable food systems worldwide and how we can translate policy into tangible outcomes. As those who attended previous dialogues know, these events are an integral part of Ireland's contribution to next September's UN Food Systems Summit. That summit will give life to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. It will help enable the sustainable transformation of our current frameworks for producing, processing and consuming food. Last year's UN State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report estimated that almost 10% of the world's population were experiencing food insecurity. COVID-19 combined with climate change and conflict, as well as a plague of locusts, will, since that report was published, have increased food and nutrition insecurity for many millions more people. Sustained action is required now to address these specific challenges and to deliver transformative and enduring improvements across the global food system. This will require a focus on inclusive and sustainable economic growth, innovative food production, climate resilient agricultural practices, and universal access to affordable and nutritious foods. Ireland's role in the establishment of the Food Systems Summit has been important. We were among the first to call for this high-level event. We are providing support to extend its reach and its impact. We are working to ensure that there is strong engagement from key stakeholders within least developed countries and also from small island developing states. Ireland has a long established commitment to eradicate global hunger to supporting the production of and access to sustainable nutritious foods. 
This is a commitment born out of our own historical memory of famine. Ireland's international development policy, A Better World, restates this commitment. That policy seeks to refresh our engagement on food, hunger and nutrition. As we think about a sustainable food systems approach, we must consider the connections between economic, environmental and social systems with the production, consumption and distribution of food. The UN Food Systems Summit is an opportunity for Ireland to show leadership and to be a champion for, sustainable, for a sustainable approach to food. Our understanding of food systems and the role they can play in achieving the SDGs has grown over these three, last three dialogues. These events have allowed us to discuss and reflect upon the complexities, challenges and opportunities that will arise. We have heard how a sustainable food systems approach has informed the development of Ireland's 2030 agri-food strategy. We've heard of the changes needed to strengthen the health and social sustainability of our agri-food policy. And we've heard how innovation and inclusivity are the way forward. This final dialogue will focus on how Ireland's domestic and foreign policy work together to deliver sustainable food systems. I look forward to really insightful and thought-provoking observations on the challenges and opportunities facing those operating on the ground in developing countries and on how we can use our voice to encourage and promote actions that will support inclusivity, efficacy and sustainability. We will first hear a keynote address from the Chair of the Development Assistance Committee at the OECD, Dr Susanna Moorhead. Susanna has served as the British Ambassador to Ethiopia and Djibouti and UK Permanent Representative to the African Union and the UN Economic Commission for Africa. She has also served as the UK's Executive Director at the World Bank and held senior positions in the UK's former Department for International Development. In her address, Susanna will illustrate the challenges facing food systems and explain the importance of ensuring coherence across domestic and foreign policy. She will provide us with some thoughts on how Ireland can take action in responding to these challenges. Our second keynote address is from Dr Jamie Morrison, Director at the UN's Food and, Agricult food and Agricultural Organisation and the strategic programme leader for its food systems programme. Prior to joining FAO, Jemmy was senior lecturer in agricultural economics at Imperial College London. In his address, Jamie will provide some context to the rising food and nutrition insecurity globally, further accelerated by the ongoing pandemic. He will also share perspectives on the process and possible outcomes for the upcoming summit, while drawing on learnings from recent FAO Ireland initiatives in East Africa. Following these, we will have two panel discussions moderated by RTE's Anya Lawler. The first will focus on how Ireland can show leadership across the multilateral system to promote sustainable food systems. The second will look at how we can move from policy to practice, examining the challenges and opportunities when working on the ground in developing countries to support food systems transformation. We have heard many voices and perspectives. Sorry, we have many voices and perspectives to hear. So, without further ado, I will now hand over to Dr. Susanna Moorhead for her keynote address. Thank you. Let me congratulate Ireland for organising this important event. Ireland's history means that you bring unique substance and credibility to international discussions about food security and food systems. And I hope that your example will be followed by other UN member states as we reflect on what we can all do to make food systems more sustainable, both domestically and internationally. It's almost impossible to overstate the importance of food systems in the context of sustainable development. And COVID, of course, has made global food insecurity even worse. Shockingly, over 2 billion people go to bed hungry every night or don't have diets that are sufficient for a healthy and happy life. Food production and consumption have massive impacts on the environment, on biodiversity, on the availability of water, and on all aspects of climate change. Food systems, of course, have the potential to provide livelihoods to generate jobs for poor people. So they're an integral part of trying to tackle poverty in poor countries. And last, but by no means least, in fragile and conflict affected states, food becomes often a weapon and another source of instability. So what can Ireland do to help tackle these challenges? Clearly, this is about foreign policy, domestic policy and development policy, and it's critical that all three work together. 
to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Ireland is a very important player in the international development architecture, a key member of the Development Assistance Committee at the OECD, of which I'm chair, and a generous donor providing over $970 million of official development assistance in 2020. As part of the DAC, what we do is to peer review each other, to hold members to account to the high standards and values that we set as a committee. And Ireland had a peer review uh, in 2020, um, and, and there were some really positive and important findings from that. Um, Ireland does a huge amount to live up to its promise of uh, focusing on, on the least developed countries and trying to leave no one behind. Ireland is a world leader in women's empowerment and gender equality and a staunch and, and generous champion of civil society organisations in the international development space. The peer review also identified some areas where Ireland could improve and particularly in terms of policy coherence for sustainable development. What, what do we mean by, by that? Um, I think in its simplest terms, it, it, it's firstly ensuring coherence across different policy areas. So, for example, if you're thinking about food and agricultural policy, that clearly has implications for the health of the population or, or indeed uh, the environment. The second dimension is policy coherence across generations. So policy choices that we make today are going to have implications for our children and our grandchildren and, and that is particularly critical in terms of the environment. And thirdly, policy coherence across the world. So the policy choices that we make domestically, whether in terms of tax or trade or migration or broader foreign policy, clearly have implications for other countries and particularly for developing countries. So really policy coherence for sustainable development is, is a is a rather fancy term for simply saying we need to reflect on the, the overall impact of the policy choices we make and of course the trade-offs and to do so in a way that maximizes the contribution we can make to achieving the SDGs across the world. Ireland is a really important voice in, in this space. Um, partly through your excellent diplomats, the role you play in multilateral organisations, but also the experience you have from your developing country programmes and, and projects. Um, I'm hoping that as part of, of these conversations that we're having today, that Ireland's voice will continue to be heard in the European Union, certainly in the Development Assistance Committee and elsewhere in the international system. Ireland has long been a loud champion of the, ad, of the fight against hunger um, and is well placed to champion policies that underline its eradication, which surely is something that we ought to be able to do in 2021. Food systems are one of the three priorities of Ireland's development cooperation policy called A Better World. And through development cooperation, it's possible to build coalitions and generate valuable evidence to support the global changes required to wipe out hunger from the face of the earth. Working with multilateral organisations is essential for this. And I would really like to thank the Food and Agricultural Organisation for its global leadership during this particularly challenging time for food security. I'd like to close by leaving you with four ideas for how Ireland could take this important agenda forward. First, please keep investing in agricultural research and development that benefits developing countries. This is investing in the future in ways that gives very, very important returns. Second, please share lessons about what works and what doesn't from your development partners and programmes. Thirdly, Share your experience from citizens' assemblies on how to consult and debate difficult policy issues such as climate change. I think we have a lot to learn from your experience there. And last but by no means least, explore ways in which Ireland can make its agricultural policies contribute to net zero. Let me finish there. Thank you very much for inviting me to, event, to address this important event and I wish you every success in the deliberations over the course of this meeting. Goodbye. 
Susanna, thank you for those remarks. And before we go any further, let me tell you who you are joining us today. Uh, we asked you what sector you were joining us from. And from the international development sector, about a fifth, 22%. Farming only 6%. We'd love to see more farmers tuning in today. Uh, the agri-food industry, 15% of you watching are from there. The biggest number are joining us from the university research sector and also around another fifth, 19% from civil society and independent. I'm going to give you another Slido question now which will feed into our first panel discussion in a bit. Ireland has an historical experience of famine, which Susanna was talking about there. So, what types of game-changing solutions should Ireland therefore be focusing on at the Food Systems Summit? Is it empowerment and innovation for smallholder farmers? Universal social protection? The elimination of hunger? Improved low-carbon agri-food infrastructure? or conflict prevention and peace building. Let us know which one of those you think is most important. And now please welcome our next keynote speaker. As you've heard, he's Dr. Jamie Morrison, the Director of Food Systems and Food Safety Division at the Food and Agriculture Organisation. And Jamie is also a member of the Food Systems Summit Secretariat. Over to you, Jamie. Thank you, Anya, and good afternoon to all. Let me begin by elaborating on a couple of points that Susanna Moorhead made on the importance of food system transformation in accelerating process, progress towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. While some of the initial concerns about the potential disruptions to food availability as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic were alleviated through the maintenance of trade flows and food systems, transform and food systems functionality, the pandemic continues to bring into sharp focus the many areas in which food systems are not delivering on desired social outcomes. One of the starkest of the many challenges that we face is that even before the pandemic, 690 million people were suffering from hunger, a number that had already been increasing over the past few years and which has jumped sharply in the past 12 months. And this puts us even further behind our target of eliminating hunger by 2030. Of course, the drivers and patterns of inadequate food and nutrition security are complex, and they manifest in very different ways. The challenge of eliminating hunger often sits alongside the growing health concerns associated with increasing prevalence of overweight and obesity, and the reduced potential of the many millions more suffering the consequences of micronutrient deficiencies. But one of the many underlying factors that are constraining our ability to reverse these trends is the fact that 3 billion people are unable to afford a healthy diet. And this is particularly concerning. With the impacts of COVID continuing to reduce the impacts of the most vulnerable, affordability will increasingly constrain food choices. And by implication, this will hold back the required transformations of food systems. So how do we address the complex problems of ensuring that food systems deliver safe, nutritious and affordable food to all, but do so in a way that also drives greater equity and livelihoods and purchasing power and makes a positive contribution to the natural resource environment? And this is where the Food Systems Summit is so important. Through the national dialogues such as this one, which are now taking place in over 100 countries globally, the summit is providing a process whereby nations can provide and identify pathways to more sustainable food systems that are relevant to their particular challenges and capacities. Informed by the work of five summit action tracks, these dialogues will allow countries to develop and to commit to bold actions that they and their development partners will need to take if these pathways are to be successfully implemented. But of course, this involves working through many complex trade-offs and paradoxes. For example, how do we encourage changes in consumer behavior, which are needed to drive improvements in health outcomes and in the way in which food is produced, when such a large proportion of the global population is so heavily constrained in the choices that they can afford to make? Here, enhanced social protection programs will surely need to play a critical role. Equally, how do we square the importance of ensuring that mechanisms are in place 
to limit disruptions to global food trade in times of crisis, with the need to develop resilient local food systems that address issues of poor returns to producers and inadequate or unsafe diets, but which at the same time may imply restrictions on cheap food imports. Many of these challenges are not new, and some countries have been navigating them successfully for decades. There is much to learn from these cases and to share with others as they develop their pathways to improve food systems. Ireland's journey has provided to be an invaluable source of inspiration for FAO's work on food systems. In early 2018, we joined colleagues from the African Union Commission and representatives from 11 countries across Africa to engage in a series of conversations with a range of public and private sector leaders in Dublin. Our African colleagues observed a unique coherence in approach and in vision, and that inspired ideas that they could then take back to their own countries. In fact, the learning exchange was so well received that the African Union Commission subsequently invited Irish representatives from the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, Sustainable Food Systems Ireland, Board Beer, Gland Beer, the Smurfit Business School, and Irish Aid to travel to the African continent to continue this lesson sharing with events that were held in Rwanda and Uganda in 2019. At the same time, we've been working in collaboration with Wageningen University um, to document such lessons so that this experience can be shared more widely and used as a source of inspiration for other countries. To list a few of these lessons, Ireland's success in linking science, research, extension, and education, and placing it at the core of systems transformation. Ireland's integrated approach has accelerated knowledge absorption while also ensuring a continuous flow of high quality expertise to the food industry. The integrated approach has also strengthened linkages between education institutes, industry and farmers. The benefits of the public-private origin green training partnerships are illustrative of this. And at FAO, we've been very fortunate to be the recipients of two origin green placements, Cleaner Conlon and Chevail Bird over the past few years. The long-standing priority that Ireland has placed on food safety and authenticity insur assurances has also been a critical transformational factor. The fact that the sector has been able to leverage its traceability mechanisms for tracking sustainability targets is commendable, and again, an important lesson that could be replicated in other countries. There are many other learnings that I could refer to, but I would like to end uh, this presentation by simply reiterating the invaluable source of inspiration that Ireland's journey continues to provide to many of us. We will continue to watch and to learn as Ireland navigates its way as a world leader in the production of sustainably produced, affordable and nutritious food, both for its domestic consumers, but importantly, for the global community. Thank you very much. And Jamie, our thanks to you.